for example, when the Powermatic 80 first came out, um, I, uh, I thought it was a tweak to the uh, 2824 um, ETA. And it was more than that. Because the reason I thought it was a tweak is because they went down in the um, beat. It went from an, a four hertz to a six hertz movement, eight beats to six beats a second to partially increase the power reserve to 80, hence the Powermatic 80, and also to significantly reduce the wear on the parts. Because, I mean, you are uh, taking, I mean, at surface math, 25% of the uh, load off of the system, which is obviously a semi-logarithmic thing. Various parts will benefit more than other parts. Uh, but the bottom line is <clears throat> the uh, Swatch System 51 technology platform was there to develop technologies that are being that will be and are being used throughout the swatch group and that includes the uh powermatic 80. now there's an interesting thing about the powermatic 80 that <clears throat> a lot of people don't uh well even the ones who follow may may realize but may not realize is that a lot of people think that the, the powermatic 80 is specifically a silicon hairspring uh watch and in reality the uh, powermatic 80 was originally developed with the um, Nivacron watch uh, hairspring uh, technology, which is still used within the Swatch group. It's their metallic anti-magnetic, paramagnetic uh, hairspring technology. Um, so for example, just like uh, Rolex has their semi-metallic or mostly metallic, uh, actually, before I get in trouble, I'll just say it's metallic. Um, Rolex has got their metallic hairspring technology that is anti-magnetic. And uh, the Swatch uh, Nivacron technology is based on titanium. It's also metallic hairspring technology. So they uh, both can say that they're not using a silicon hairspring. But in the mainstream, silicon is a good thing the average person understands the benefit and they recognize that they're not getting a hand adjusted watch <clears throat> for a thousand bucks anyway. So have one that works well. Um, or even at the higher point price points, nobody has complained yet about the, uh, Zenith El Primero having a silicon escapement pallet fork, uh, escapement wheel, everything. I shouldn't say everything, but you know what I mean? Um, that's a lot of the escapement made out of silicon, <clears throat> but that silicon is a material. So um, the Tissot Powermatic 80 Silicium is the one with the silicon hairspring because they developed that for the gentleman, the Tissot gentleman, which is also a silicon hairspring. So uh, this way, Swatch could literally have their cake and eat it too. They've got a silicon hairspring Powermatic 80 movement that you can buy, or there is a Nivacron uh, Powermatic 80 watch that you can buy. And another thing a lot of people don't realize is that the uh, body of the mechanism of the Powermatic 80 is uh, mostly made up of a material called RCAP, which is a copper nickel zinc material that is less magnetically sensitive. So the watch itself is actually made of uh, better materials in a lot of sense, which <clears throat> leads me to another aspect of it, which is the materials technology aspect, because um, the Powermatic 80 expresses a lot of machine manufacturing and design. It also expresses a lot of advanced materials, either silicon or uh, RCAP or Nivacron. Um, and it opens up a lot of questions about the nature of a watch and what's important about a watch. Mm -hmm.